Okay, good evening, ladies and gents. We'll just give it a second here for everybody to get into the stream. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, we're gonna be talking about how to survive central bank digital currencies today. So we'll get into that in just a moment. I saw someone asking where I was. I'm in Madrid now in Spain. A lot of, and in fact, talk about the irony of the this post today, where we're talking about how to survive CBDCs, central bank digital currencies. And what are we seeing in Spain at the moment? We're seeing hundreds of thousands of protesters on the streets because of what I talked about in Friday's walk and talk in that uh, some very interesting things that happened with the French, uh, the Spanish election. <laughs> yes, indeed. So today's video then, let's get into it now that I can see everyone's gotten into the stream, is all about how you can survive CBDCs. Now, you might wonder, how has this post come about today? Why am I talking about this today? And it's because I keep getting questions all the time. And I mean daily, as well as seeing comments on the YouTube videos about CBDCs. So I'll tell you what they are in a moment, for those of you that don't know. But what I'm noticing is that you seem to be concerned about this. This seems to be quite a big topic that everyone is worried about. So I wanted to um, take, I took about two to three hours today and just did some research for you. I put down all of my thoughts and notes on how to avoid these things so that you don't get trapped by them. So let's begin then. And let's just start very briefly and simply with what a CBDC is. This is uh, stands for a central bank digital currency. This is different to a fiat currency like a US dollar or a British pound or a euro in that this is a centralized currency. So how do we look at that? Someone asked me the other day, is it the same as Bitcoin? Is it the same as a cryptocurrency? The answer is no, because where a cryptocurrency is decentralized, a CBDC, a central bank digital currency, is centralized. So they're very, very different things. <clears throat> very different entirely. And the other thing you need to be aware of is that the central bank digital currencies will be owned by the central bank and the government. A lot of people still don't seem to, uh, aren't aware, because it's not you know public knowledge in a lot of cases, that central banks are not all owned by the government. A lot of them are private. The largest one is the Federal Reserve. It is a private institution owned by shareholders. So it's really important that we distinguish this first and foremost before we go into countries that you can look at and options for how to avoid these things. So let me go on to the next point then, which is all about the issues around it. Because people always say, Neil, why are you so against CBDCs? What are the issues here? Well, I've put a list down. I've got, um, got my notes here, my trusty tablet. And the first one was the unlimited levels of government surveillance. And I remember when, you know, we were talking about this a long time ago. I always use we because I include you in this. And I explained that what was happening and what I thought was going to happen as time moved forward. And we're seeing all of these things play out now. We're seeing the levels of unbelievable surveillance actually happening. So <clears throat> actually, before I forget, I almost forgot to, to mention the Black Friday sale is now live. So you can find the courses in the description below. And it was really crazy what happened earlier because it's only, I think I said I'll do 20 or 30 coupons per day on the courses. Well, I put 30 coupons on yesterday, ready for today so that I could say, okay, the, the thing's live. And I went on just before, that's why I was about 30 seconds, a minute late. And what I noticed was, the coupons had already gone, so I need to just <laughs> redo those coupons for you. But it is a crazy, crazy deal. Um, any of the courses, you can get them below in the description. So that is the, um, the main thing before we carry on with the video. And I've just put loads of video testimonials on the, the information page as well. So we'll be running that 
this week for Black Friday through to Cyber Monday. And no, it's not a gimmick. It literally, it, you know, genuinely is 90% off the courses. This is the only time every year, it's just one week of every year that I do all of my courses at this price. So you can go and grab that now. And um, okay, with that said, let me continue on then. So what are the issues? Well, it's all of this surveillance. This is the, the big one. It's the restrictions on our financial freedoms as well, because they've said they're going to make this a programmable currency. And I remember listening to the BIS, which is the Bank of International Settlements meeting, and I was really concerned and disturbed by what they were talking about, really disturbed, because they talked about how they were going to program these currencies to make us comply. They actually use that language and they use COVID as an example and they use medical things as an example that if we don't comply in the future, the programmable nature of this will make us, it will uh, force us to comply. And they gave the example of people who, I'm just reading the notes here, here, here it is. He said uh, an example was people who refused to get vaccinated during COVID we were able to sanction them. This is the words they use. We're able to sanction them by having employers fire them from their jobs or force them to get it. And this is the sort of language that I find really disturbing, really, really disturbing, this sheer level of power. Now, there's some more examples that I pulled out from different governments. This was from um, this was from London. So ULES was one proposal, which is past the low emissions zone. But the other one that didn't pass, but I think will pass later on, is pay per mile for driving. So they've talked about this being linked to the CBDC as well. They also said that you will only be, and again, these are more extreme proposals. So I'm not saying these will pass, but these are proposals by politicians or senior people. And they said that you'd only be able to spend your digital currency in your zone. What does that mean, your zone? <laughs> or 15-minute cities. So they didn't call it 15-minute cities, but that's what it is. They call it C40 cities, which are, we've done a video on this as well, C40 cities are 15-minute cities. Uh, the other one was meat rations, if you are consuming too much meat and over the carbon allowance. This was another one. Energy quotas for your household airline flight limits of one every three years. A lot of news agencies did very good documentaries on the one flight every three years uh, proposal. So I, I, you can see I've took a lot of time today because I really want to help you out with this situation because I know it's, it's causing issues for a lot of people. A lot of people are concerned. So I have done a lot of research for you. I have put all my notes down here. <clears throat> now, there's a lot more dangers that I don't want to go into all of it because I don't want to you know, be accused of Dr. Doom and Gloom today. But those are the main issues that you need to be aware of. <clears throat> but remember, they can also monitor all of your transactions. They can see everything that you are doing. And it's going to be managed by technocrats. And that's the other issue is technocrats. The other one was around healthcare. And they gave a good example of healthcare with the central bank digital currency. And to me, I and I just want to give you the example straight away here. I would say, especially if you're in a Western country, as I know most of my subscribers are, the government and the media is very good at scaring you and saying the West is the only country, it's the only way, it's the best country in the world. And other countries are, you know, they're hovels and they're developing and it's, they're crime ridden and all this other stuff. Um, what was the other one I heard earlier? Healthcare. Healthcare is absolutely terrible. And, you know, you'll get all these diseases in other countries and stuff like that. Now, let me tell you, I've traveled now. I've lost count how many countries. I think I stopped counting somewhere at 70 or 75 countries that I've traveled to. Um, example, this week I'm in Spain. Last week I was in Portugal, traveled around Portugal. And I want to give you a top tip on this as well. Because people ask me all the time, Neil, what country should I move to? I get this all the time. What country should I move to? And the answer is the country that is best suited for you. And I know that doesn't really make sense. And there's a sort of not a, 
um, you know, solid answer. But I know people who love Spain, right? I know people who love Costa Rica. When I was in Costa Rica, some people said, I absolutely love Costa Rica. This is the best country in the world. For me, I loved it. I loved the weather and I loved the, the people and the food and things like that. But I didn't feel like my heart was there. I didn't feel as though I could live there full time. Other people, you know, one of my favorite countries in the world is, I, I love Southeast Asian countries. I love Thailand. I really love the Thai people, for example. I love the food, the weather, the culture. I've taken a friend there before and he said, I hated it. I couldn't stand the country. I could never move here and things like that. And so it's really all about what you feel most, most comfortable with. And we are going to look at countries as to who's doing CBDCs, who isn't, because I've made a detailed list here of all of them. But coming back to the healthcare example was that I remember waiting. I told all of you about this um, for an ENT specialist appointment. And uh, that's ear, nose and throat, because you hear sometimes I clear my throat. I have I've, I've had problems with my throat for years and years and years. And in the UK, which is supposed to be a developed, one of the most rich countries in the world, I was on the waiting list for almost two years, two years. So what did I do? I just went private. I, I just said, this is ridiculous. Why am I waiting two years on this waiting? I, you know, it was ridiculous, the whole thing. And then I had this big checkup. I saw a speech therapist. I saw these other things. And we found out what it was really simply. I had an allergy to lactose. That's how easy it was, right? But my point here is that I could have gone to, let's say I was in Thailand, I was in Bangkok, where I've had an injury before. And if I had an injury in the West, it would have taken me months to see specialists. And I had it, you know, and what actually happened with me was I went in, I had it all looked at, I had an x-ray, I had all this stuff. It was about 50 pounds. I was in and out the same day, right? So this is the example I'm just trying to I'm trying to give you here. You don't have to just stick to your one country, okay? You can look at other countries. It's not all the way the media portrays it. The world isn't all scary and, and war zones and, and everything else like that. The next thing I want to move on to then is how we're seeing this movement of authoritarian countries. So, and, and you, might, you might find this bizarre that I'm going to give examples, things like the UK, um, European Union, the USA, Canada, Australia. These are all countries that if, you, if we'd have said this 10 years ago, I would have thought I was crazy. We'd have all laughed at where the, these Western countries are today and the restrictions of freedoms and privileges and, and how they treat us. 10 years ago, we would have thought that's crazy. But now what we're seeing is this authoritarian nature coming through. Um, and I just gave you the example of what's just happened in, in Spain, where the president didn't win the election. He came in second, but now he's won the election, right? You, you see how this is all going along. We're seeing things in the UK. We're seeing now David Cameron's come back. He's not an MP. David Cameron's come back. There's a lot of controversy around this appointment, how he didn't even, the first thing he did was he went to see Zelensky in, in Ukraine. All right, so we're seeing all this crazy stuff happening. We've got all of the, the you know, British people on the streets. And then we're seeing um, people coming in on, on dinghies and things like that, who get hotel rooms and food and, and other things. It's everything's flipped upside down. And yet you go to other countries and you're not seeing craziness. You go to you go to other countries and you're not seeing, you know, a, a very strong woke ideology being pushed down people's throats. People, everything exists there in, in, um, in cooperation. That's what I see. I don't see people <laughs> trying to force ideologies onto other people. Right. So these are all the things that I'm. I'm concerned about and the CBDC links into all of this because once we get into it, the central bank digital currency, once we get into this, there's not really going to be a way out of it. So if, let's look at some countries then. <clears throat> so if you want to stay in the EU region, for example, well, you have got Denmark is one country. They were actually an early adopter of CBDCs and they showed a lot of interest in it 
um, especially around 2016, but after about 2017, they actually ruled them out, feeling that it didn't have much to offer the citizens. And they've never taken, and, and bear in mind, they have the crown. So Denmark doesn't use the euro, similar to the, the British pound. They don't use the euro. Uh, we'll talk about Poland in, in a second. Also doesn't use the euro. This gives these countries more strength. But remember, they're still in the EU. So you've got to bear this in mind. Uh, Poland, I, 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 some of my favorite people are Polish people. Um, always have been, always will be. And you look at Poland, have their own have their own currency. Um, they also are not looking to implement a CBDC at the moment. <clears throat> They've been very clear on this. They've done a, a lot of pilot tests, but right now it's not looking as though it will actually happen. Serbia, one of the best countries in, in Europe at the moment for a lot of people searching for freedom. You know, you, you look at what they've done in recent years. They have done the polar opposite of what the EU and a lot of Western nations have tried to force onto people. Um, <clears throat> now, Serbia is on the doorstep of the EU, but it's not actually EU, which is another another benefit. Um, the, only, the only concern I'd have is that it is very close to Ukraine and Russia. So if anything kicks off, we could see an issue there. But other than that, um, Serbia is, is a country that isn't looking like it's going to do it. Um, but if we look at, say, Central America now, I keep hearing a lot about Ecuador. Lots of people are talking about Ecuador and how Ecuador is the place to go. Well, yes and no. OK, they haven't done a CBDC, but if you look at um, we have quite a few people from Ecuador in the private community and they talk a lot about the crime and the gangs and all the things going on there. So I think it's it's going to be we're going to see a pattern here is that when you look at any country, yeah, the crime rate might be ridiculously high, but it's usually in the big cities. I was just walking not long ago in Madrid in, in the centre here and it was not how I remembered it. I was here 10, 15 years ago and I remember it was beautiful, you know, really beautiful. So I was just walking the streets now. Maybe it's a different area of Madrid that I'm staying in here, but it's graffiti everywhere. Graffiti everywhere. There is trash all over the streets. There was almost stepped in some dog poo. Um, there was people, there was one person lying on the street. I mean, it's not what I expected, but I bet if I went outside of Madrid, just like Portugal last week. I went to some beautiful places, no crime at all, didn't see any crime. So again, we have to bear this in mind when we're talking about crime rates. It's usually in the big cities, but Ecuador is um, <clears throat> a country that a lot of people are looking at at the moment. A lot of people are really liking. You've also got El Salvador, Bitcoin country, um, Costa Rica we talked about, Belize, Panama, all of these countries are also not looking to do a CBDC. So you've got a lot of options in this region. And now let's just shift our focus to South America then. <clears throat> um, the first one then is Venezuela. However, Venezuela is dormant. Is Venezuela a country I would want to live in? Personally, no, <laughs> it wouldn't. But I'm just giving, letting you know that is an option. Uh, Bolivia is, as well is, is not looking for a CBDC. They've got very friendly immigration policies as well. And it's quite easy if you did want to get citizenship somewhere. And um, that is another place you could look at. Again, I would always look at more rural locations. I'm not talking about cities here when I'm use, using these examples. Um, let's look at Asia. Asia is really booming. If you look at the reports that have come out about where we're going to see the most growth in the future, um, it's Asia. You're seeing growth in Africa and Asia. This is where we're starting to see growth, where we're seeing stagnation and decay is Western economies. There's just too much debt in these, in these places. But we've got Uzbekistan, this is becoming a big investment hub at the moment. It's not a country I've ever been to. I can't tell you anything about it. Uh, Japan, although the yen is uh, looking very 
shaky, but again, they're not looking to do a CBDC. Let's move over to the Middle East. We have Kuwait. They have the dinar. Remember, the dinar is one of the strongest currencies in the world. They're also not looking into a CBDC. They said that they would not like to pursue a CBDC because of the restrictions on citizens' freedoms. So some of these countries get it. They do. They really do get it. But again, it's a toss up. You've got pros and cons with every country. Uh, the Caribbean nations, they've already done most of theirs. The Caribbean nations have done their CBDCs. They've launched. And again, a lot of these launches have not been successful. Bear that in mind. We talked about Nigeria the other day. The Nigerian launch was not successful. It's about 6% adoption. We look at the Thailand launch on the CBDC. I didn't even know it had launched. I asked my friend. He didn't even know it had launched. He lives in Bangkok. Another one of my friends as well, very successful in Bangkok, he shared something with me the other day, which made me say, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And he was talking about the cultural differences. So he's an American expat. He left America with his family and all his kids because he was just fed up of how it was all going and what his kids were getting taught in school and everything else. So he just moved to Bangkok in Thailand. And we went to visit him on the last trip. He lives in a beautiful apartment. They've got a swimming pool. They've got a nanny. They've got all this for the same that he was, you know, same sta better standard of living for the same income over, over there. And you might think that's crazy that he can have a better standard of living than where he was living in the US. But that's exactly what has happened there. And he said the main difference as well is that if you're wealthy in um, Asia and the Middle East, for example, if you're wealthy there, you're respected. And if you really work hard and you, you know, you educate yourself and you start a business, you become successful, people admire you for that. But he said in America where he was, he said uh, it wasn't the same. And it's the same in the UK. If you do that and you're successful and you even show any of your success, people don't, don't respect you. They try and pull you back down. Someone gave the example of crabs in a bucket as well the other day, right? This is, um, so I was just looking at the chats there. We have some, a uh, couple of trolls on there. Um, you know, this is the, this is, these are the examples that we, that we were talking about. This is what happens in certain Western cultures. People do try and pull you back down. And let me just say, there's nothing wrong. If you are successful, you've worked hard. There is nothing wrong with being successful, with being wealthy and enjoying yourself. Um, so don't get caught in that trap as well, that cultural trap. So you've got a lot of options there. What about, though, financial options? Because we know that there's going to be something moving over, right, in terms of your fiat to a CBDC. Well, this is why you want to look at diversification. So cryptocurrency is an obvious one, like Bitcoin, if you believe in crypto. I know some of you don't. I have crypto, right? I, I do. I think that it is going to probably be a good diversification when everything goes bad. Gold and silver, we've talked about this before. There are even bank accounts now where you can buy gold, where you can, or I don't think it's silver, but you can buy gold and then you can spend the gold from the debit card on that bank account. That is a solution for a lot of you. Um, using cash, having, you know, another passport or a different residency. There's a lot of, there's a lot of backups that you can do here, but Bottom line is, when all of this actually launches, you may have to make sacrifices. And I say this to everyone, you might have to make some sacrifices. Because if you're not willing to jeopardize on some of your freedoms, if, if these things start happening that we talked about at the start of the video, you might have to make some sacrifices. So it's, it's, something, it's something to think about now and just think about all the things we've, we've talked about um, as we've gone through. But finally, then just um, I'm going to redo the coupons for the courses today. So any of the two finance courses. And if you're in the UK and you're interested in property, I'm even doing the three property courses as well on the sale. So, all right. Uh, enjoy. I hope you can grab one of the courses and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. God bless.